Hey, this is the Level Up Engineering Podcast, where we talk with some of the most successful engineering leaders who reveal actionable management insights that help you take your developer team to the next level. This episode is brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications from design to delivery with React, Node.js, and Angular. Check them out at CodingSans.com. Welcome everyone to the Level Up Engineering Podcast. I am Carolina Toth, and I have the pleasure of talking with amazing technology leaders every other week. Today, my guest is Zoe Sobin. She is here from HubSpot. She's a senior engineering manager. And if you are a listener, you know that I have interviewed someone else from HubSpot, Nadia Al-Ramli. She is found in episode 24. So if you're interested to hear more about HubSpot and their engineering manager onboarding, check out that episode. Today, we are going to talk about something completely different, but maybe you will get a chance to hear some more secrets from HubSpot. Not such bad secrets, but like interesting secrets. So before we start with today's topic, Zoe, it's really nice to have you here with us. Please tell us a bit about you. I know you have been working at HubSpot for quite a few years. So let me, let me know what your passions are and, and what you do in your life. Um, yeah. So, uh, in my life, I live in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I, uh, you know, spend a lot of time with my husband and my dog and getting outside. New England's pretty cool. We're by the ocean. We have mountains. We have a lot to do. Um, so we, we stay busy getting outdoors. Uh, but I've been at HubSpot for uh, seven years this July full time. I actually started at HubSpot as an intern, uh, came back full time after graduation, uh, joined pretty quickly into the reporting team and and have been there on that team for over six years now. And uh, it's been a really wonderful experience career-wise to really, uh, you know, grow with the, the product and, and with the company um, and to see our technology and the, and the problems that we solve grow in complexity as well over time. Uh, so it's been a really, really wonderful experience and a lot of growth and hard problems to solve. I love that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. HubSpot mm -hmm. really seems like a wonderful place to work from my little experience with people who are working there. Highly recommend. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's jump then into our topic, which mm -hmm. is basically a transformation that you did. And mm -hmm. um, we are calling it learnings on leading a platform team or a framework mm -hmm. team. So mm -hmm. before we jump into the nitty gritty, Mm -hmm. Give our listeners a little bit of context as to what the project you have been working on is and what you what you think is the best key takeaway from it. Yeah, so um, the project that I work on is it's really a centralized solution to reporting across, Hub, across HubSpot. And so HubSpot is uh, at its core a CRM, right? So businesses are running on HubSpot. They're you know, uh, using it to send marketing emails or using it to close sales deals. They're, they're, uh, servicing their customers through that, through their support needs. Uh, and so reporting is the place where people really get to see the impact of their actions, right? Are they, are they closing deals? Are they sending good emails? Like all of that stuff. And so, uh, they, they come to reporting and, and get to get all that data into one place and get all their reports in one place. When I first started in reporting, that wasn't the case, right? We had all of these solutions built out for each individual place. So you would have email reporting, you would have deal reporting, you would have all these point solutions. And uh, my team really took that, centralized it, and, and built a core platform to enable those teams to be able to provide the reports that they want to their customers without having to be experts in reporting. I love that. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can be on a similar page with the, with the listeners now. So cool. before we jump into, mm -hmm. into what you have done, um, what made you decide for, for centralizing all these, all these things? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we were seeing a lot of customer feedback around, uh, like, different ways to do reporting, right? Reporting, like, you, you think it's just a line chart or just a bar chart or just a pie chart, like, whatever, or tables. Uh, but really, you're making 
big decisions about the way that data is presented to customers. And what we were finding is that team A might make a decision like, okay, we want something as simple as like, you know, day of week to start on Monday. And the other team says, I want day of week to start on Sunday. And then all of a sudden you're doing weekly reporting that doesn't match. Uh, and so we were seeing that kind of friction come up for customers. And uh, we, we saw an opportunity as a team to really uh, build one thing in a consistent way. Uh, and we took advantage of that. And it's, it's really been better for our customers overall to have one one person really solving that problem for all those teams right when you say it like that it kind of sounds like a very straightforward kind of this is our natural next step mm-hmm. um did you st- i mean even i'm we all work at companies and even when things seem like they are the natural mm-hmm. next step sometimes they get roadblocks um mm-hmm. But did you need to get some buy-in from upper management? What mm-hmm. was kind of the process of building um, this centralized solution? Yeah, so I, you know, a lot of teams, and and still to this day, I think, uh, like there's friction around, you know, the email team. I'll just use that as an example. Like they they know the best email reports to their customers, right? And so when you're building one solution that works for everyone, it really works for no one at the same time, and so. Uh, you have to navigate the fact that like, you're going to have to compromise on some very specific functionality for very specific problems and instead build something more generalized and um, something that works for, you know, 80% of use cases at that last 20%, that last mile, it may not solve for that. And so um, navigating that as we, as we pitch this idea, like we, we really built it out first as like a centralized core reporting platform. And then, um with with our own customer facing applications on top of it and then we started to work with those teams that had point solutions and talk to them about like okay how do we like actually get those supported and in what using our infrastructure and and can we um did i answer your question i lost kind of kind of i'm kind of wondering Mm -hmm. before you actually implemented did you or maybe that's not the case at upspot but did you did you have to like talk to your manager or talk mm-hmm. to someone, their manager, or, or was it kind of like, okay, guys, we are just going to do this because yeah, we so have the we, freedom. Totally. Uh, so we built, we built something that wasn't really a platform solution to start. So the, the need from HubSpot was like, we want at least one place to do our core reporting. And so we built out that core reporting, um, but it wasn't built in a way that was like easily plugged in anywhere. Right. It was, it was built, one in one very like end-to-end fashion and so uh our team building that saw an opportunity to actually abstract away from the specifics and and build something more powerful and that would scale across more and more data types and more and more report types and so at that point that was when we really said hey like we have we see this problem here we see that there are all these individual teams solving this problem we just went and solved this problem too like the thing that we're doing is really powerful and we think that we can um, scale it in a way that will solve for all these other use cases across HubSpot. And so, um, we did have to get buy-in like that's, I think anytime you're, you're, you're investing in a tool that's there to support other teams, like that's a huge step that you take as a team. Um, and I think very often as engineers, we're really taught to, um, we're taught to avoid code duplication. And so in many ways it comes naturally, but you actually should be really afraid of that. Right. Because the second that you're promising a solution to other teams and saying like we're going to provide x for you like that's a that's a like a long time guarantee like you don't know how long they want to provide that to customers and how long they're going to be having requests and and uh feedback for you and so we did have to get buy-in from our manager and in general i think at hubspot there's a lot of autonomy given to teams and so you know we went to our manager and said we believe in this like this is something that we think we can do and like we want we, we see the customer opportunity and the value in doing this for the business. Um, and it ended up being a pretty easy discussion because there was just a lot of trust and, and our managers are generally pretty technical and close to the problem. And it's, it's pretty easy to get buy-in on that kind of thing when you really have that crystal clear problem solution. So they also saw some of the, some of the benefits right away. That's pretty mm-hmm. amazing. I just mm-hmm. remembered, I talked to Camille Fournier a couple episodes away. Mm-hmm. I uh, can't remember which number, but she also talked about, you know, when 
when you jump into that kind of situation, you have to think a little in the future, mm -hmm. like, is it going to be on the long term beneficial to have a platform team and to maintain mm -hmm. that team? And because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not just a technical decision. It's also a business decision to, to put the money in there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge, it's a huge, um, you know, allocation of resources and time and energy. And I think, um, you know, it's also challenging, I think, to find like engineers who are excited about that. It's a different kind of problem to solve. It's not just like building software, right? It's not just like shipping out new features. It's really thinking about problems in a different way and in, in a, like this abstracted way that it's, it's not literal. It's like all the things that this thing could be and, and solving for so many different use cases at once. Um, and so, uh, there's more friction getting work done and the, the problems, um, are, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not cut and dry because you're always thinking about that lifetime maintenance. How will this get in the way of like the next thing that we want to do? Um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. What well, can, can you elaborate maybe mm -hmm. a little bit as to like, what kind of engineers you want mm -hmm. to have on, on a team like this one? Yeah, I think, um, so in a team like this, so the reporting platform, uh, it's the way that it's really built is like, there's a component interface. So a team, like, let's say the email team, I just keep using that. They want to put a report in their tool. They, there's some fields that they can provide to essentially a component. We take that, the, those fields, use that to generate, um, requests to our, to where our, uh, data is stored. So our data warehousing solution, then from there it, um, we take that data, we format it, we like hydrate it with labels and we like own, we own components and we plug it into those components. And so you have to have engineers who, um, I, for this specific problem, who are interested in BI and data visualization, who are really passionate about that problem space and, and see the opportunity and in investing a lot of time and energy to these like cross cutting platform features, like leveling up these reports for everyone across the board. Um, like that, those changes take a lot of time and, and, the impact you can have is so huge, but the, the converse of that is that mistakes can be really huge too. And so people who are comfortable taking their time and building things like the right way. Um, and then also there's a lot of cross team communication and collaboration that you have to do. There's working with other teams on, um, what are the biggest, what are the biggest requests that they have for us? Um, uh, you know, helping them understand what can be done now, what can't be done now, why or why not. Um, and getting comfortable with a little bit of like negotiation sometimes, right? It's like, okay, we can't do all of this, but like, what if we do something like this instead? Uh, and so, you know, I think, uh, it's some, it's not, it's not the kind of engineering that everyone wants to do. It's what I love. It's like what I spend most of my time at on doing. I really enjoy it. It's both like, a really hard technical challenge as well as a hard people challenge. And, and the com combination of those two things is very exciting and fun for me. And it sounds kind of complex too. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, definitely. That, that sounds like uh, a fun uh, exercise that you have to do every day. Mm -hmm. um, so back to, back to the beginnings, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you kind of talked to your manager and they mm -hmm. were kind of into it and mm -hmm. they were also kind of technical and understood mm -hmm. what, what mm -hmm. the benefits would be. Um, were there other stakeholders that you had to involve? What was kind of the, the coordination needed to, to make this happen for HubSpot? Yeah. So, um, so we built, we have this idea for this platform, right? We're like, we're going to build this, this one, this one perfect solution. And every team will come build their reports on top of it and it's going to work everywhere and everyone's going to be so happy. It's going to be perfect. And so um, we kind of went around and like talked about it like that, right? Like we went to go talk to these other teams and we said like, Hey, like, you know, we, we really tried to like sell this vision of like what we thought this thing could be. Right. And I think uh, people were on board. I think there are two, two things that we saw kind of play out from that. The one, first one was that people were, excited, like they understood the value in it, but we're also like nervous, right? Like they really care about certain features and certain things that they need to, to solve for their customers. And so that was like a scary thing. Um, and so in order to really like get people bought in, we, we invested a lot of time solving for those individual teams and trying to convince them to adopt it. Right. Like we, we really used, um, we used 
the vision and a commitment to delivering the features that they wanted to get them to adopt it um, and to get be bought in on it. I think in retrospect, that was like a little bit short-sighted of us. I think, um, you know, finding teams who were really interested in the, the platform solution, who didn't want all this like custom one-off things for themselves would have been a better use of our time when we got, got started out because, um, you know, then all of a sudden you're, you're promised the world to this team, you promise them these features, and now you're kind of having to like walk things back and deal with technicalities versus a team who's like, oh yeah, like we get it. Like we trust you, like do this. Uh, uh, so we, we really, so to summarize, I guess, like we, we use the vision and we use like, you know, specific promises, I think, to get, to get buy-in. And in some ways, I think that wasn't the right decision. I think in retrospect, I would have, um, I would have preferred to focus on making, making it really good, um, and solving for the people who got it more early and then worked on like, you know, those early adopters and then focus on those late, those, the late adopters later, and then work at that point to get buy-in. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Although okay, okay. I'm, I'm, thank you for sharing that because yeah, this, yeah. mm, this is very beneficial for someone who is just thinking about building mm -hmm. something like this. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking it's good to have those people on your shoulder yeah. or, or on your end who are not the early adopters because they are going to be hard to convince. And then yeah. from that on, if you have, you know, already have them on board, then everybody else is going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I think that's what we, we lean into. And I don't, I don't necessarily think it was like, I'm not like, wow, like I regret that. That was, it went badly. Like it didn't go badly. Right. Like we got them right. in, like we, we worked through it. We, we made it happen. I think, um, um, you know, it just, it, you can get into sticky situations where you promise things that later you, you can't deliver on and things like that, or they don't make sense for other teams. And you start to think about the platform is like, okay, like we have to solve for all of these people, not just one of them. Um, and so we kind of got ourselves, we kind of learned better over time, I think, how to manage expectations on specific requirements. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? I don't think it was necessarily a bad thing. Like we learned a lot. Right, 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 right. <laughs> what I'm thinking is that yeah. <laughs> this makes me wonder if you had like different promises out to different teams and then mm -hmm. if teams were like oh you're doing this custom thing for that other team mm -hmm. why will you not do this other custom thing for yeah, my definitely. team yeah definitely definitely that did that happen yeah absolutely wow or, you know it, well a team a team has a request not knowing how hard or easy something might be right and so a team might be like hey like we really want to be able to customize like colors on this chart in like this kind of way and we're like cool yeah like we're already let me do that. That's on our roadmap. Like we want to do that. Like, we'll just like make that happen a little bit faster. Like, sure. No problem. Um, and then other teams will be like, well, we want this custom interaction that when you click on this, we want this to happen. And we want, you know, a, another chart to appear. And you're just like, listen, like, I hear you. I also think that sounds really cool, but like, that's a lot of work to just solve for one team. And it's, it's really advanced and we're not quite there yet. Um, and so having to kind of navigate the, different levels, different tiers of requests and triage those and decide what to work on and when and, and how to set expectations with people about what those things were. It was definitely, huh. definitely learn, learn by doing situation, I think. Is there um, maybe a specific story that you can share with us? Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps something that you did with one team and, and how you handled the same thing on another team? Um a good question specific stories it's been a while um um specific stories i'm not know that i don't know if i can conjure one up right now that's okay <laughs> that's okay um okay then tell me more <laughs> about um what what were kind of the steps to prioritize between the team's requests and and how you kind of rolled out what Mm -hmm. um, maybe did the, the business dictate what were your priorities or, or did your team get to decide based on the, the, mm -hmm. the complexity of the specific requirements? How, how did you, did you yeah. do that rollout? So, um, so an individual, like, so for our team, we, the way that we navigate priority is like that effort versus impact. I, I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. that before, but it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you, you really want to be working in that, like low effort, high impact 
bucket all the time and thinking a lot about like that downstream customer, like how, and so it's tough for, for a, a platform team like this because your customer is other teams and also customers. And so you're balancing those two things constantly where, um, you know, you, uh, and this happens with engineering teams all the time where like a squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And so uh, you want to balance like solving for those squeaky wheels and solving for the customer and, and navigating like all those different ways to think about prioritizing uh, incoming requests. Uh, and so it's really on the team to like, look at all those, those like, incoming avenues, those, those data, those streams of customer feedback and team feedback, um, and figure out like what is going to be like the best use of their time and what is going to have that highest ROI and that highest impact. Um, and so I think for prioritization, it's just knowing the customer working with your product manager and designer on like, what is the, it's like the right thing to do. Like I'm like air quoting, like, uh, there's, you never really know what the most important thing is going to be. It's always you try to use data the best you can to make like the right decisions. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a combination of customer and, you know, trying to help, help those other teams hit their goals and all all that, all those inputs. And measuring how, how you can achieve the greatest outcome with the lowest. Exactly. 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 I love that. Okay, so as you were as you were doing this, you got mm-hmm. uh, great buy-in. You got people who were on board. You got teams who were excited about this. Mm-hmm. Um, what was kind of the communications process between um, your team and the different other teams? Did you have like one-off deep interviews with what the teams needed, or did you have regular one-on-ones? Did mm-hmm. you have? product owners talking to product owners or did mm-hmm. you have engineers talking to engineers? What what were some of the frameworks that you put in place to make this the best thing? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, definitely early on, we spent a lot of time with those teams. Uh, so the ones like, especially, you know, we talked about earlier, the people who had a lot of opinions who like really um, had a vision for how they wanted reporting to be in their tool. Uh, we spent a lot of time with them. I know my team, we traveled to Dublin. We like met with the teams in Dublin. I saw an office there. And so like, we really spent a lot of time getting face to face and understanding what they wanted, what their, what their fears were, what, what they, um, what they, what their needs were, you know? Uh, and so we did a lot of that to start out. Uh, and then from there, we've kind of broke down, broke that, that down, broke, broke that stuff down into like, you know, we're going to commit to X, Y, Z, we're going to make this our priority um, and and sharing those commitments back out to those people to let them know like what we were planning to do and when. Um, and so that was, you know, f- five years ago now. And so HubSpot's grown a ton since then. And so we, the things that work then aren't necessarily working today, right? Like we couldn't meet with every team today that is using reporting like we would be in meetings for like a long time and so right. We, right. we rely more heavily now on like a ticket-based system or like in our, we have like a centralized slack channel where people can come in ask questions make requests um and then from there we decide like okay does this need to get escalated into a meeting and, and how and that's something that like uh product and ux will generally help us with is like really vetting those requests and understanding like where they're coming from and and how to how to prioritize them and i i think like a lot of the times teams come to talk to you and they don't really know what what to do how to engage with you right and so a lot of it is also teaching them how to engage with us what's the best way to get um results from a platform team and that's to have really clear you know customer requirements it's not coming to us with solutions and asking for specific features coming to us with problems and then partnering with us on solutions uh and so teaching teams like you can't just come in and ask for one thing like just right. really like bring us along with you help us understand the customer pain so that we can figure out in our own way what the best solution is and then come together on that um i love yeah. that mm-hmm. i i love that and i like i feel like i can totally empathize with that mm-hmm. i um I think in every kind of situation these days, we work in such a complex environment that Mm -hmm. when we, who are not experts in a specific field, try to come with solutions that we have made up, 
they're usually not the best solutions. And, mm -hmm. and so we, we have to come to the experts with the, with the problems that we are having and be mm -hmm. like kind of courageous enough to share what mm -hmm. is hurting us and then like partner up with the, with the experts to, to think together about how to solve those problems. Totally. There's no better way to get a flat out no than to just come saying, will you build X, <laughs> you know? Um, and so part, it's so important to like be, be vulnerable and take that time. Um, it's so important. You're totally right. And also, um, another observation is that mm -hmm. you mentioned like UX and the product people. Mm -hmm. And so how do you have the teams structured mm -hmm. so that everyone can get the, the right amount of information? What, what kind mm -hmm. of, um, team members do you have in a team or do you have like specific people who are communicating with each other? Or do you have cross-functional teams totally? Could you, could you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, the reporting platform team. So we have a front end and back end team that work on the reporting platform. Um, and they, they're, they're set up in a pretty similar way to most of, or most of HubSpot engineering teams, which is that there's a bunch of, bunch of engineers, there's a front end TL, there's a back end TL. Um, and that, that group is partnered with a product manager and designer, uh, and, and they, you know, together figure out like the best way to, to work with all these other teams. And I think it's, it's, it's ever changing. Like we, you know, people come and go and process is fluid over that, over time, everyone kind of has their own style, their own way of running things. And so, um, yeah, I think, uh, it really depends. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So mm -hmm. what I'm gathering is that your kind of work environment has a lot of freedom mm -hmm. built into it. So people yeah. are given a lot of trust to, to kind of do what they see fit and, and what they deem to be important at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, what if there are, what if there are conflicting requests mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. if there are, teams that are like trying to get you to do something for them at the same time. Um, what angles do you consider in this, in this situation? Yeah. So that's, that's exactly when you start like really leaning on your product manager, I, I would say, and your designer, I like we have a very engineering driven organization. And so I really want like engineers to be a part of that conversation, but at a certain point when it really comes down to priority and down to making those like, tough calls. Like that's exactly when I want my TLs to be like, Hey, like, I don't know the right answer. Right. Or, or coming with an opinion and being like, Hey, like, I think X is more important than Y, but like, help me figure out if that's true or not. Uh, and so, uh, that's when like, you would kind of tap your product manager who would then come in with their own perspective based on talking to customers, talking to the product managers of those other like inputs, wherever those, uh, requests are coming from, uh, and using the best, as much data as they can to back up that decision, uh, mm -hmm. if it exists. And if it doesn't, then maybe get there to data. Exactly. Talking to customers, uh, figuring out, is there anything that we're tracking that can, can help us, um, that we can learn from, uh, like have something, you know, have, you, you know, if like a, if there's a feature request for something similar to what we've tried before, let's go back and look at the data from how that went and figure out if that was really like worth the, the effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I love that tip. That's mm -hmm. so great. Sometimes it's the easiest to look at how you have solved the problem before and then use that approach again. Yeah. Um, awesome. So uh, it all sounds nice and flowery. Um, <laughs> what were some of the objections that you have run into when you were switching over to the centralized solution? I'm sure you had some objections. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, uh, you know, there are people I think who like, it's, it's really hard to understand. It's like a technical thing. And so like my manager got it, but I think other, it took people along, like people who are less technical longer to see the value of it. All, all they might have seen is the results of what had happened so far. And so it's like, okay, like all I'm hearing is, these specific features that this specific team wants aren't being supported yet by the platform. So is the platform even working? Like, is this, a, is this the right answer actually? And so there's this, 
that balance that you have to take between this vision and this promise to also being transparent about the realities of building a really long-term solution um, that may not solve every use case today. And so we definitely ran into friction with like, especially like other product owners who really were pushing for certain features um, that couldn't get them supported. Um, you know, uh, other groups who are trying to just push on certain initiatives where, you know, maybe the data quality wasn't good. And so the, the request to go back and like change the quality of their data. And it's like, well, shouldn't the platform be able to do anything? And it's like, well, there are certain requirements that we have to be able to like build really flexible solutions, right? We have to have consistent inputs. And so uh, just navigating all of the, like, I think the ways that we might've like over oversold a bit at the beginning or or it's just such a balance. Like you want to get people excited about it. You want to get them committed and bought in on it. but then you also need to figure out how do you like help them along the way with the realities of actually getting there. And I've seen that for us in reporting, like we have um, other framework teams that have spun up across HubSpot since then who've also struggled with it. It's hard and these multi-year efforts um, are, I think uh, sometimes it just can be frustrating sometimes. And I totally empathize with that. Uh, But, and then, you know, the best you can to celebrate the wins when they happen so people can see that it is paying off, right? Uh, Right. Showing them the things that you can actually support and really celebrating those is to help, help show people that you are making progress, right? Towards that big thing is so important. I love that. So since you mentioned other platform teams Mm -hmm. that are springing up across the board, Mm -hmm. did you do any kind of um, like a, this is how we did it, uh, cheat sheet or, or <laughs> any kind of, uh, you know, like internal presentation or workshop to kind of show them the nitty gritty of what you have done or, or where you have faced some, um, you know, objections yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a few things that we've done. Uh, so HubSpot does something called tech talks where every week the entire product engineering team gets together and someone does a talk on something technical. And so like, I've done a number of talks and like, Hey, like, here's how the, here's how the reporting platform works. And like, here's where we're at and just creating like transparency and helping people like learn from our experiences. Um, and in general, like I partner really closely with the people who own those other platforms and we, we've, especially in, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're out of the, the hardest parts of the platform adoption, I would say for reporting. Um, and so at certain points, just like being really, like a resource for the people who are going through maybe like an earlier stage of that problem, like those, those other leaders and, and having like really like open conversations with them, but like what's worked for us, what hasn't, like what has been hard, what's been easy, um, that kind of thing for sure. Can you, can you tell us a few things mm-hmm. that have been hard or have been easy maybe in your journey? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, the hard, the hardest things have been, um, you know, I think realizing that just like you, how do I describe it? It's like getting comfortable with not saying no. Does that make it's, it's, I, I think it's so important to say no, but it's, it's like also not saying like we won't do something. It's like being comfortable with like that negotiation, even if a team is like coming in and asking for some wild stuff, like that was something that was really hard for me and something that like I spent a lot of time talking to my manager about where I'd be like, yeah, like this team wants to come in and like, do they need all these things? And like, Oh my gosh, like, what are they thinking? Like, they don't even get it. And he's like, you can't just say no to them. Like you have to figure out how to work with them and like, like meet them at least like halfway as well. Like they're trying to work with you and they don't, they're not in your head. They don't get it. They don't get the problems that you're seeing. And so that was where I was like, okay, 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 okay. I got it. I got it. Um, and I think in general, like also just like figuring out how to like motivate engineers on like a, a long, long, hard problem, right. It takes a lot of time and, and it's very detail oriented. And so, um, as well, you know, talking to engineers who are feeling like this is, you know, this is hard. And like, I, I don't know that I enjoy this and, and, helping them uh, trying to unpack that. Why, like, why don't you enjoy this? Why don't you understand or not? Why don't you understand? But like, what, what, what is feeling, what is feeling demoralizing to you as you go about this work and trying to remove those things that are feeling more demoralizing that like 
what what they may or they may be more or less interested in you know i love it thank you so much mm -hmm. for for sharing that because i think this is every conversation i end up at this point maybe it's because it's me who is having the conversation <laughs> but i'm thinking you know that negotiation that you mentioned you know like telling a team we cannot do this just yet but mm -hmm. here is something that we can do and it's kind of similar to what you want and yeah. also not exactly what you want but like also doable mm -hmm. and talking to your team and and okay. being like confident enough in each other to share you know when you are feeling not actually so motivated to to work on something that's not perhaps entirely customer facing or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you don't feel appreciated because people are not getting exactly what they want. And so yeah. they aren't so satisfied. You put that way better than me. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, yeah. like all the problems at the end are mm -hmm. people problems and oh, we are <laughs> building, building software, but we are building software for other people and Humans and even <laughs> engineers, even engineers are people and they, you know, sometimes they lose the motivation and sometimes mm -hmm. they want mm -hmm. things that aren't doable at the moment. So thank you so much for, for, for sharing the, the internal, not necessarily struggle, but like the internal yeah. opportunities to, <laughs> to make things better within your team. Mm -hmm. Awesomeness. I think we have covered a lot of ground as to how to build a platform team or a framework team and and your kind of journey as to how you got here mm -hmm. um where are you right now how how does your team work at the moment yeah so we have this uh centralized reporting platform that powers all the reports through um, our reporting tools, so we have dashboards, we have libraries, we have report builders, they're all powered under the hood by this centralized solution. We're building more and more types of reports all the time. So now we're thinking a lot about how do we scale this even further? How do we support more data and more report types and more, um, you know, taking taking report interactions like to the next level? It's, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, teams across, trying to even to continue, you know, the, the, the journey of supporting everything that these point teams like email or whatever they want to uh, support. Like we're still on a journey to can't, you know, stay up with them, like as, as their, their needs continue to evolve over time as well. So we're just evolving and we're growing it out and getting, you know, strong leaders in place as we scale up our own teams and things like that as well. It's been, it's been really a ton of growth. Um, and a lot of, a lot of fun. I love it a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, you kind of mentioned that there is this like centralized Slack like, channel where people mm -hmm. can throw in their requests kind of, mm -hmm. um, do you still have interviews to, can we expect you to visit Europe sometime soon? You know, like, <laughs> like, are there, are there still ongoing yeah, explorations? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Talking to teams and understanding what's important to them and that never ends, right? That's staying connected to your customers and, and you should, you're never done talking to your customers, right? The second you stop, you're probably building the wrong thing. So we're always talking to them um, and finding good, good opinionated people to, uh, to collaborate with across HubSpot for sure. Awesome. Um, so after covering a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of our listeners are probably fired up to start up their own platform team. Do you have a word mm -hmm. of wisdom or a word of warning? Mm -hmm. Kind of like, here is the <laughs> one thing warnings, that you should... Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead then. Let them out. Oh, I... Yeah, I think um, uh, like engineers are really smart and they can connect the dots and they can see these opportunities for for these centralized platform abstracted solutions all the time, not just as like teams that even in their own code bases all the time. It's like, I build the thing now and I can see how if I just, if I just tweaked it a little bit, it could work for these 10 other use cases. And so it's, it's so tempting, especially I think because in school and just earlier in your career, for some reason it's just hammered in you, like code duplication is bad, code duplication is bad, like clean it up, make it like the least amount of lines possible. 
Um, and it's such a slippery slope because without knowing really those other use cases, you're, you're making a big guess about your solution and if it's going to actually solve all those future problems that don't exist yet. And so, and not to mention, you're now committing to supporting all of those use cases. And so, if, especially if you're committing to building a whole team around it, right? And so, if that, um, so my word of wisdom for engineers who are in their own code bases thinking about, oh, I can abstract this or that. It's uh, something my manager taught me, which was the rule of threes. Like it's a, I, it's like a software engineering principle. You can like Google it. It's just build something three times before you abstract it. And that was nice. really great advice. And it's it's simple, but it's clean, right? It's just build, like, don't be afraid of duplication three times. You'll understand tons of use cases that you didn't before, tons of issues that you may not have known off the bat. Uh, and then from there, consider whether or not you want to build that abstracted solution. For people who are looking to actually build, you know, missions around those platform things, or or maybe their their team is seeing an opportunity, well, if I just built this platformized, then I could support all these other teams and it'll be like a side project for my team. Be really careful about that. Like those things snowball. The second you're committing to other teams, you have a you're you're you have a promise that you're committing to. Um, and if that doesn't fit in with your team's true mission and like the resourcing the company is giving you, it's the wrong thing to be doing. And so uh, just be skeptical, make sure you do have that buy-in before you move forward because it's, it can be kind of a slippery slope <laughs> and you can spend a lot of time and energy on it very quickly. Uh, oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Anything that you feel is important for, for us to, to learn from you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Not that I can think of. Just uh, be skeptical of platform solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you are like the best person to hear that from. Yes. Um, where can our listeners follow you or your work if they are excited about this topic or if they want to learn more from you in the future? Um you know, connecting with me on LinkedIn, Zoe Sobin. I have a Twitter, Zoe Sobin. Um, I'm not too hard to find. Not, not many Zoe Sobins out there. So, Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dearest listeners and watchers, today my guest was Zoe Sobin from HubSpot. She has shared a lot of exciting things about platform teams and most of all to be skeptical and most mm -hmm. of all to look at the people and try to understand them and try to help them. I think that's my key takeaway mm -hmm. for today's conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. This was the Level Up Engineering Podcast. I am Karolina Toth and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for staying with Level Up Engineering. If you enjoyed this podcast, so will your friends. Share this episode on your favorite social networking platform. To stay up to date with our content, follow Level Up Engineering on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or Google Podcast. Brought to you by Coding Sans, a software development agency building web applications with Angular and Node.js. Check them out at codingsans.com.